What's up guys? Not much of an update. I've been working on this damn 2002 Chevy S10. Rebuilt the motor, new pistons, valves, etc. You know. Put the motor back in. Well, my luck. I had a fucking new faulty fucking oil pump. So I had to pull the bastard back out. And put it, finally got it back in. Now I'm putting all the accessories back on so I can get back to my baby. So to be continued. What's up guys? I guess this is going to be the official teardown A20 Reborn video. I'm going to try to pull the whole motor and transmission out as one. You see it's almost prepped with all the wires tucked. You know, I'm going to remove this radiator. Remove my strut bar, try to hook up right here and hook up on the trans. I might have to remove this distributor and stuff. And just, I'm going to try to raise the whole thing out of there and see what's all tore up in it. So, you know, to be continued. All right, guys, we're making a little progress. Got the radiator and stuff moved. A couple hoses. Got the clutch cable loose. Most of the harness is loose. Um, working on getting the rest of that out. Remove the dog bone. You know, it's getting there. Getting ready to just pull this whole whole sucker out gotta undo the axles exhaust but you know we're getting there all right here's where we are we got both axles out shift linkage is undone I went ahead and removed the center I didn't have to but that center damn beam under there both axles are out everything's disconnected it's wait till tomorrow to hook up a chain we're gonna yank this POS out of here to be continued what's up guys <clears throat> if you've seen the past recent video then you know um, I pretty much hit a water puddle hydro locked it and now I got some knocking the motors pretty much prepped ready to pull out motor transmission all is one <clears throat> but you know of course it's got to rain so we're gonna I've been so busy I ain't been able to update or really you know keep up with anything but on that 89 uh, Integra transmission I got, I finally got a, a cord bell housing from the U Pull It junkyard, and I finally assembled this, uh, you know, hybrid gear uh, transmission. This is actually an A A18 bell housing from a second gen Accord. I come to realize that after uh, <clears throat> looking up this little, it's hard to see because it's a little gold strip, but the number, the second gen Accord bell housing. And yeah, I know it has a shorter, you know, keep in mind, I pulled this off at 88 Accord fuel injected model. So keep that in mind. This is a, And this guy at the yard was telling me, yeah, I helped the guy do the swap. And, you know, I wasn't believing a word he was saying. And apparently it was. <clears throat> and of course, I guess the A18 holds a smaller uh, clutch, clutch or something, but as you get to, uh, I didn't realize that until, you know, I was in a hurry and trying to get out there at the last minute. Security was ready to throw me out. But this was kind of grinded in this area where they rind it. So I just took my little tools and, you know, shined it up, grinded it out a little more. I may cut it back some more when we get to test fitting. But it was on an 88 Accord. So since it's raining, I'm going to do, I guess, get back. I ain't got nothing else to do, but... uh I got this little Mr. Gasket engine port pollen kit. I had like a $20 off coupon. So then that cost me like 35 bucks or something. I can't remember. And I got all my bits and tools. I'm going to try to continue on. And I guess part two of the head build of getting these uh, exhaust side polished out. Start out with this little... Okay, I ain't never done this before with the tools so y'all y'all keep in mind this and i got some fine sandpaper i'm was gonna finger it out with sandpaper but i was saying that i don't know how long i'd be here and you know be a nightmare but we're gonna try this tool hopefully i don't fuck it up too bad to be continued on this situation all right i guess it's working pretty decent i you know, it's got these casting marks that run down the side. I've been trying to remove those. Let's see how it runs all the way down. So far, I've probably been doing this for like 45 minutes. I've been working most of my time on this one. And then, you know, a little here. A little here and there on the next one and the next one. Just a little bit at a time. But I guess it's going all right so far. 
Still taking a long time, but it's getting there. All right, here's where we're at, guys. I'm taking this rough stone and uh, all the casting. See, like that flat line down there, that uneven casting. I'm smoothing all that out, smoothing all that out, getting that all out there. And there's also like a lip. Let's see, we, it's hard to see, but yeah, there's where it's dark right there. There's like a lip, so I've been just you know smoothing smoothing that out. Trying to be as careful as possible not to tear up the damn seats. But, yeah, it's going to be a long process to be continued. Alright, I pretty much knocked down all the rough castings on it. Pretty much grinded down the butt cracks that are on the side. Opened it up just a hair. I think I'm going to have to break down to my small Dremel to get down fine in the chambers. Yeah, it's getting there. I had to break down to my small, small arts and crafts Dremel to get the rest of the dirt and all that out there and the rest of the little castings. But now I guess I'm up. I don't went through probably, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five of these little rolls. Still got quite a bit left. I'm probably going to do that a couple more times and put the flap on and then just finger it from there and smooth it out. Alright, I end up putting this flapper tool on there and running that through there a couple times and then it comes with this little bar that they said emery, emery cloth, so I just threw a piece of sandpaper on there. But that's, it's hard to focus. That's where we're at so far. I think the rest needs to kind of be done by hand with the sandpaper. But, you know, that takes out majority of the work right there, so that's cool. I'll do the rest by hand. I don't know how long it'll take, but, you know, to be continued. Oof. Dang. It's a crummy camera. It's getting there. It's getting there. i just been kind of somewhat fingering it with WD-40, and I used approximately that much on one hole so far. So, boom, boom, boom. Got enough to do that four hole. I'm probably gonna have to get more sandpaper, but it's it's smooth as hell. You still see little tiny scratches, little gouge down in there here and there, but for if you know keep working it and you'll get there. Alright guys. This is put um I end up yeah, I'll turn the light on in here. Alright, I end up using two sheets of sandpaper, half a sheet on each hole. I wish I had something better than uh, the 220, maybe 200, 180, a little rougher. But uh, I did an hour on each hole. That puts me around 10, 11 hours. Hold on. We could probably still use another another 10 hours to get a mirror finish on it. Sorry for the, it's 5.30 in the morning and I can't get a good focus on the camera. But yeah, that's where, <clears throat> that's where we at. And I'm going to call that good for part three. You know, part four, you know, I may take a break on this side and we'll flip to the intake side. Do our gasket match. You know, pour it out. We're not going to polish that side. We're just going to open it up. We're just going to open it up a little more approximately in these areas. And it looks like the in injectors are a little higher. So we'll just grind that out, you know, open it up a little bit. And then probably get back and put another four or eight hours on trying to get a mirror finish on these. They're slick as hell, but you know, there's still little imperfections and you know, I might as well go all out if I'm doing it and 
It's a lot wider and smoother and open than it was, so to be continued.